Are you looking for a straightforward character who can function as a decent damage dealer, good tank, and has generally useful utility? Well, Vayne may be the character for you because he can do all of that while still remaining a relatively simple and straightforward character. In fact, I'd say he may be one of the better characters for newer players or those less confident in their skills simply because of how forgiving he can be and how simple he is to actually optimize. That isn't to say that he is boring by any means, as he does have a pretty fun gameplay loop and a lot of ways to stick to enemies and output as much damage as possible, and showcasing that will be one of the functions of this guide. In this video, I want to discuss Vayne, discuss general playstyle and setup, talk about some strengths and weaknesses, and showcase some practical use in harder raid fights. As always, if you enjoy guide content on this game, RPGs in general, and especially Xenoblade, and are interested in seeing more, please be sure to subscribe to the channel because it does help me out so much. Let's get into it. So let's talk about the basics first. Vayne is a character who is probably middle of the road DPS-wise, but where he lacks in DPS, he makes up for it by having access to stronger defensive utility than most other characters, and inherent tankiness most other characters will not have. Not to talk too much about his skills and sigils before we get there, but he has the ability to give himself a 20% damage cut with combo finishers automatically taking reduced damage, gets drain on combo finishers, and can have guts up at nearly all time, making him always able to have that 1 HP safety net and hard to take out. All of these aspects can allow you to make more mistakes with the character and be just fine, or sometimes even ignore boss attacks entirely. Vayne has a few different combo finishers he can perform, all with varying amounts of normal attacks into finishers. One normal attack and combo finisher will lead into a pretty standard attack combo. Two normal attacks into finishers will lead into a finisher that spins in the air and does four hits total on the way down. And three normal attacks into combo finishers will finish with a larger, heavier hit, while also filling his beatdown gauge more than the other finishers. His actual optimal damage rotation is also pretty simple, but it's a bit unintuitive compared to what you might expect, so let's talk about that. So Vayne's first support skill, Proof of Valor, allows him to perform powerful combos with the Y button by consuming the beatdown gauge, and as mentioned, this beatdown gauge is filled by performing normal combo finishers. You might think that the ideal Vayne play style will be filling up this gauge and then using it to output a lot of damage, however that actually isn't the case. As of right now on the current patch, using the beatdown gauge at all is actually a damage loss due to a number of factors. The major of these has to do with one of his unique sigils, Hero's Will. Essentially how this sigil works is that each time you use a combo finisher, you will get 3% of your skill cooldowns refunded. And this applies per hit of your combo finishers. Now remember when I said that the second of his combo finishers, which is basically X, X, Y, Y, does a finisher that performs 4 hits? Well, this sigil will proc on all of the hits of that finisher, which if you look at the bottom right, gives you some massively reduced cooldowns. And according to other Vayne players, supplementary damage hits also trigger this, which means you can get some really crazy reduced cooldowns with this, which is actually pretty absurd and means you don't have to rely much on other sources of cooldown reduction at all. This finisher also has a very hard to hit damage cap with the scaling, and each individual hit of the four hits being able to hit much higher than you would expect, also making it the best option for normal damage combos as well over his final finisher. Considering Vayne has a very high damage skill that can be spammed much more often with this tech, and some really strong utility skills, this ends up being by far the strongest option for Vayne players to spam because it will give them far more damage than any other rotation options, which unfortunately means ignoring the beatdown gauge. I would not be surprised to see patches tune and change some numbers around to make this feature more worth using in, a in the future, since it does seem like it was designed to do decent damage when fully filled, so do keep this in mind if you're watching this video from a later patch. Vayne's second support skill is pretty similar to some other characters. He can just parry attacks with his Y attacks to avoid taking damage and continue dealing damage himself, which can be pretty nice to have. The ideal Vayne playstyle and gameplay loop is likely going to be focused on using your skills as much as you can and then doing second tier combo finishers so you can reduce your skill cooldowns and get as much damage as you can while still contributing to the team in a positive way with your utility. All around, it may seem like he doesn't use a lot of his kit right now, but at the very least, it is pretty simple and effective as a rotation to get the most out of his character. Other gameplay stuff will be covered in other sections, so let's talk about setup and skills now. So as you may expect at this point, the best weapon you possibly have access to is the Terminus weapon because it has the best bonus traits in the game. Catastrophe is fantastic, plus 50% attack, plus damage cap 100% when you're below 45,000 health. Absolutely run this if you have it. Sigil boost is a great trade as well to get even more benefit out of all your equipped sigils. If you don't have it, crit away weapon should work just fine. A max ascended weapon should work just fine as well, but ideally you'll have the Terminus weapon drop, especially by the time we get to the next patch and next raid. Now, the imbued traits I have on this, critical hit rate level 9, this gets me to 99% critical hit rate with my current level of overmasteries and only one critical hit rate sigil, which is really nice to have. Now, 100% would be ideal, but at this point, 99% feels good enough for the uh, other imbued traits I have on this to get as much damage as I can out of him. So, combo booster and combo finisher. 
Now, as you might recall, I said that his combo finisher, the second combo finisher, the one that we're spamming all the time, has a very hard to hit damage cap. That is kind of the main reasons I have these as the sub traits on this. I figure this would be the best kind of sigil to get the most benefit that I can out of that attack, and get as much damage as I can out of it. And even with these, I'm still not capping that because it is very hard to hit cap. I mean, you can hit even higher on the score attack than I did at the beginning of the video if you have even better kind of traits of this. So combo booster, I believe every like two and a half seconds it'll reset, but ideally you're still kind of stacking it up really quickly even if it does reset because the term um supplement or damage is also able to apply to it and the just sheer amount of hits that you're doing it should be kind of beneficial most of the time anyway and combo finisher damage is going to apply to that attack no matter what and that's really the only attack that's super hard to hit cap on everything else shouldn't be that annoying most of the time at the very least and then besides that when we get into the actual sigils i have the uh Double Awakening or Double Unique Sigil equipped here. This is because I don't really have any better options for equipping both separately. But this does give two really nice traits, I would say. The Damage Cut is not necessarily required, but it's really nice just as a more defensive and tanky option for Vayne. Hero's Creed. Every time you land a combo finisher, you reduce your damage for 20% for 15 seconds. And it's, this is pretty easy to keep up most of the battle, because you're always using combo finishers when you're using Vayne. So you're able to keep this trade up and get that free 20% damage reduction, which makes him pretty tanky. And then we have Hero's Will. This is obviously super required. This is what allows you to just spam your skills super often with uh, your second combo finisher that hits four times each and procs potentially eight times of supplementary damage. So absolutely have this as a fantastic skill to have. Sigil to have, I should say. Outside of that, we've got some more general traits that I think are just generally useful. I have a uh, Tyranny and Attack up here. Now, I'm running Attack up because it helps uh, reach those caps when you have higher levels of that. Uh, Tyranny is also just a really nice boost to your attack at the cost of some maximum health, which you can bypass and uh, kind of counteract with an Aegis Sigil, which I do have equipped as well. And then I have my obligatory 4 damage cap 5 pluses. Now, I'm not running as much utility on these as I normally do. I'm running attack up on two of these to reach a higher attack so I can get more damage on my combo finisher, like I said earlier. I am running a Potion Hoarder. Potion Hoarder is just a really good effect to have, especially when you're uh, kind of face-taking a lot with this character, so you definitely want to have something like this at the very least. And then I have one level of quick cooldown on this just to uh, kind of reduce skill cooldowns a little bit further if I'm not able to get as much uh, benefit out of my sigil as I want to, depending on the state of battle or something like that. Now, quick cooldown is definitely not as required as it is in other situations, and Cascade, I would say, is kind of just not that good at all on Bane compared to uh, other sigils, but I still like having this anyway just as kind of just a way to uh, increase my skill cooldowns even further. And then uh, we got I've got two supplementary damage. You can absolutely run three here and replace either Aegis or Life on the line here. And that would give you a more guaranteed skill cooldown and a little bit more guaranteed damage as well, I would say. But uh, I do like the fact just uh, life on the line allows me to get closer to uh, hitting the caps on my uh, combo finisher. And also the fact that uh, I get Nimble Onslaught out of having this equipped, which is the main reason I want it. Because that gives you more skill cooldown and more SBA gauge and some extra invincibility when I dodge attacks. So I just really like the effect of this and... That's why I've been kind of running it on a lot of things I can lately. If I could get a supplementary damage with this, I would probably run this over Life on the Line easily because I think Life on the Line stacks additively with a uh, combo booster, which is a little weird because it doesn't stack additively with some of the other stuff here, but not really a big deal regardless. Still running this just because uh, it's a nice damage booster to kind of get me closer to those damage caps, but this is, this is definitely probably replaceable with supplementary damage 5. From what I could tell, it was probably it was about the same damage when I uh, tested compared that comparatively, but... This just gives Nimble Onslaught, so it gives me a little bit more benefit in that respect. And then I have Aegis here. This also has a quick cooldown attached. This is kind of a defensive uh, option utility sigil here, just to have more maximum health, which is nice to have to reach close to that 45,000 mark, and gives a little bit of extra levels of quick cooldown. You'll notice I don't have Guts equipped because uh, I don't really need Guts, because one of his skills just grants Guts pretty much at all times, so that's why I'm not really worried about that support skill compared to other builds. And then my final two... I have War Elemental here. This is a really good effect. It gives you free bypass of the damage cap and extra 20% damage on all of your hits. Really good effect to have. And then finally, my Critical Hit Rate 5+. Plus. This gives me the 99% Critical Hit Rate, which is one of these, thanks to some of my Overmasteries. And Stamina, which is a nice 51% attack boost, so it's really nice to have. Now, on someone like Vayne, you could definitely run even more defensive utility than this. Run a little bit less offense, maybe get rid of life on the line here, and uh, run a Stout Heart. Maybe run Steel Nerves as well to uh, reduce your damage taken even further. There's definitely ways to make yourself super tanky as this character. Maybe even run Drain if you want, although you do have built-in Drain on some of your combo finishers as well. So, uh, not necessarily required, but there are a lot of ways to make yourself even tankier and even more utility-based. But uh, this is kind of a setup to kind of maximize damage as much as I can. And... Uh, 
yeah, I kind of like it. I think it works pretty well, but there's definitely some other options here to increase your tankiness and general team utility as well. So with that in mind, let's take a look at skills now. These are the general four skills I would recommend running in most situations. Energy destruction is basically required as your highest damage skill. It does basically nearly 2 million damage, even over 2 million damage, depending on your overmasters. My overmasters aren't very good for this character, unfortunately, outside of critical hit rate and normal attack cap up. But this can do like upwards of 2 million damage. It's really, really strong. And if you're able to reduce the cooldown of it constantly with your combo finishers, you can get a lot of benefit out of the skill. And it's one of the reasons that's one of the best routes to take to do as much damage with the character as possible. Then we have Heroic Beat. This is a really nice uh, gap closer that also can also restore your health. It's really fast, has a pretty short cooldown. It's just a pretty nice skill to have in general, I would say. Something I recommend running pretty much all the time. Rampart. This is Vayne's best defensive utility skill, I would say. This is the bubble that you probably have seen Vayne's use in a lot of uh, com content. It lasts a pretty long time, and as long as the bubble is active, everyone inside the bubble is completely invincible to all attacks. It does have a little bit of a startup time, so you have to keep that in mind. Otherwise, you might get attacked out of it when you're trying to use it. But once it's up, you can just keep this active, and it basically allows you to ignore mechanics. It can, allow, it can ignore some boss special attacks. It's really, really strong as a defensive utility option to make sure your allies aren't dying and just kind of uh, giving them time to uh, rest before the uh, next phase of attacking the boss. It's a really good skill, something I'd recommend running pretty much all the time outside of maybe very specific missions where you don't need it, like Proto Bahamut, but... Uh, Otherwise, it's a really, really strong party support ability, and uh, if you're spamming your skill cooldowns, you can get multiple uses of this in a fight and get a lot of benefit out of it. Then we have Draken Stoles. This is his best buff ability, in my opinion. This gives a boost to his attack, defense 30%, already really good, just because uh, that makes it even tankier and also allows him to hit his damage caps a little bit easier. And uh, with Guts, you get free guts every time you use this, so uh, you're always able to live with 1 HP basically on this character no matter what, and even if guts does get activated, you're able to usually quickly activate this again afterwards just by kind of spamming your uh, combo finishers to get the cooldown up faster so you're able to get that back, and that gives you a lot of safety and utility as the character to be able to stay alive a lot easier. And uh, the defense boost is nice as well to make sure you don't even activate guts a lot of the time, and the attack boost means you can get closer to that damage cap on your combo finisher, which is almost impossible to hit damage cap on, so... Those are really, this is a really nice skill set to have. His other four skills have some situational use sometimes, I would say. Rift Divider, I don't actually like this much, this skill much. This is a, a multi-hit kind of attack skill that's like okay damage-wise, but it takes kind of a while to use, and uh, it's probably not going to be the most useful most of the time, and the pulls full in front of Vayne is not very useful on boss fights, so usually you're not going to be running this skill. Breakthrough is another kind of attack buff that grants hostility, but it's not nearly as good as Drake install, so I don't really recommend using this. You don't get guts, you don't get your defense boost. It's just, uh, okay, well, you can take aggro a little bit easier now, but that doesn't really matter much on boss fights, and doesn't really matter much in general, I would say, for Vayne. Arm Destruction, the main benefit of this is the high amount of stun damage it can deal. It doesn't really do that much damage or do much else otherwise, but uh, Energy Destruction is just going to be better probably for stun damage and just damage in general, so I don't really think this is going to be the most beneficial skill to run in most situations. And then we have Soul Eruption. This is actually an okay skill to have sometimes, but it really depends on the situation and you think you're going to be in the range to activate this. So this skill can only be activated when you're below 30% health, but when you activate it, you will fully restore your own HP, remove all debuffs, and get a massive boost to your attack and your defense, which is really, really nice to have. Now, I don't really recommend running this for general play just because you're not always going to be in that health range, but if you are able to activate it, it can be a really nice buff to Vayne and... Uh, give you a lot of benefit while it remains active, and uh, it's really nice just to have that full heal option just in general, especially if you're not running Potion Hoarder for some reason and don't have access to full heals as often, but I think just in general, the tools you have in the game will make this not as essential as a skill most of the time, but it can be a nice skill to have depending on the situation, and if you think you're going to need it, maybe in harder raids, maybe when we get some harder raids out of the game, this could be a much more useful skill to bring along. I think that's going to cover it for his skills. Let's take a look at Overmasteries really quickly here. So ideally, you're going to want skill damage cap up as well. I did not really uh, get that here. I got normal attack cap up 16% and critical hit rate up 20%, which I did really like. So I was able to only run one crit rate sigil here. And the skill damage up 16% does not matter. I'm probably already hitting cap without that pretty easily. Uh, normal attack damage cap up still really nice, though, to hit as much damage as I can on my uh, normal attacks, which is still a lot of his damage. But ideally, you get skill can't damage cap up, so energy destruction does as much damage as possible. Stun power-up's a pretty good effect to have as well. Uh, more stun damage is never really a bad thing. You can always do a lot with stun damage to uh, stun the boss, get more link attacks off and everything like that, because link attacks are always really nice. 
All in all, not that much different than you might expect, though. Normal attack damage cap up, critical hit rate up, and skill damage cap up are going to be your major priorities here to get as much damage as possible out of the character and the most benefit out of the character. All right, I think that covers it for setup. Let's take a look at some practical gameplay application of the character now. As usual, here is a minor spoiler warning on some of the post-game raid fights if you are worried about that. Let's get into it. So this feels like a pretty good fight to show off Vayne because it really shows the benefit of the bubble ability and how useful that invincibility can be. Now, I'm not going to say this fight was played perfectly, but they rarely are, and, uh, you know, sometimes you just need to get footage and not worry about doing everything 100% perfectly. Starting things off, I activate my buff immediately and then kind of rush to one of the orbs so I can uh, kill it and throw it at him to get rid of his uh, buffs he has, the 70% damage cut. I want to make sure that's off him at the beginning of battle, and then I go into my combos to do my... Uh, Skill cooldowns after that. Uh, make sure I use energy destruction first, and then I try to go into uh, combos. Unfortunately there, I do not get the uh, second XXYY combo off, because uh, just kind of unfortunately timed there where I wasn't able to do that. And uh, he already goes into the Enrage really early, so I activate the bubble here. So this is normally an attack that can be a little annoying to avoid, especially if you're not used to the timings of it. But with the bubble here, we're able to just uh, make the entire team invincible, and... Uh, Ignore this mechanic entirely, basically, and he's going to come back down after these this set of AoEs, and uh, we're able to immediately go back into attacking him. I use an energy destruction here to get a lot of damage, and uh, then we go into more attacks here. Just going to spam my XXYY finisher again. Even though I get hit by that swipe, it doesn't really matter too much, because I'm really tanky right now with the damage cut and the defense buff, and I've still got guts activated from the previous time that I used my buff here, but... uh. Yeah, it just kind of allows you to kind of play unsafe here in some situations. Even though I'm getting hit, it doesn't really matter because I'm just so tanky. It do just doesn't matter. And I I go ahead and activate my uh, buff again so I get the attack buff and the defense buff back. Even though I didn't activate guts already, but it doesn't really matter. Go ahead and get invincibility and nimble onslaught bonus from dodging over that. And at this point, he's got his buffs again, so I wanted to make sure I threw the orb at him to get rid of one of those buffs, this damage cut he has. At this point, I'm just kind of uh, holding on to my bubble again, because we're about to need, need that one more time. And that's what I end up using here, just use the Rampart again. All in all, his gameplay loop, like I said, isn't really too difficult. It's kind of just uh, using energy destruction when you can, and uh, using your XXYY combo outside of that to uh, get as much damage out of that, and skill cooldown as you can as well. That also recharges your bubble after you use it, also recharges your Draken Stoltz buff, so definitely want to be using that as much as you can. And at this point, we're at a point where we can basically kill him with uh, Link Attacks. So I'm just trying to get my SBA gauge up as fast as possible here, so I'm going to be ignoring uh, damage he's dealing, just trying to get as much damage as I can off and getting that charged up at this point. Because the fight's over as soon as that activates. The Narmaya could have activated earlier to save us a little bit of time here, but uh, with my defense, I don't really care about going in and getting hit at this point. I'm just trying to get it up. And uh, we're at 99%. Finally get to 100. Guts actually activates there, so this shows you the benefits of Guts as well. And then the uh, Prepare the fight should basically be over at this point. Uh, we should be able to kill here without too much issue. And uh, just going to activate all my skills and just do as much damage as I can here. Heroic Beat helps me uh, do a little bit of additional damage whenever that's off cooldown as well, so don't forget to activate that. And uh, yeah, the fight's, fight's over at this point. So, Like I said, I got hit a decent amount, but it doesn't even matter because Vayne is just the type of character where even if you get hit, it doesn't really matter too much thanks to all of his defense buffs and... Uh, just general abilities survive, no matter what, which is uh, really nice. I'm throwing us in the middle of the next fight here, because I don't want this fat, this uh, video to be super, super long by showing off the entire thing. I think I probably could have shown the entire thing, but it doesn't really matter too much here. This is just, in general, going to showcase more benefits of Vayne. Even in a chaotic fight like this, where there's a bunch of damage happening at once, I'm able to kind of just ignore the damage I'm taking here. I did activate Guts there a second ago, but uh, this is Galanza and Maggio, one of the harder fights in the game, essentially, that people consider, at least, and... Uh, as you can see, I'm just kind of going in, healing myself with the built-in drain, uh, keeping my uh, health up in ways with Potion Hoarder as well, so even though, though I'm getting hit, it doesn't really matter. I'm not dying at all, really. And uh, at this point, we're going into another special attack, so I'm able to use the bubble again. And once again, you can just see how kind of stupid this is. And there's, a bit, there's uh, me actually getting hit before it comes out. So... That can't happen. There is a little bit of wind-up time. I did mention that earlier. That is the one thing you have to worry about. Once it's actually up, we're able to kind of ignore the most of the rest of this. This attack's a little bit longer than other special attacks, so it doesn't quite ignore the entire rest of it, but it does ignore most of it at this point. We just got this last little part to deal with here, the uh, 
AoEs. Uh, go ahead and dodge through that, and then we're able to get back into attacking here. So... At this point, the strategy is very similar to what I was doing before. Ideally, we can AoE both of them if we can, and I think if we're able to multi-hit both of them with the attacks, we get even more skill cooldown, which is nice, but not something that can be expected most of the time. And at this point, uh, we can kind of kill Galanza here. Me and the Vassaraga both have our SBA gauge, so we're going to be able to stun lock him here and use our high damage abilities to uh, take him out at this point. And then Magio should go down pretty quick once we get rid of uh, uh, Galanza here. So... It's kind of a two stun there, because we don't need to waste anything else on that. And Magiel, we're just going to be spamming our damage uh, XXYY to reduce our cooldowns, and then energy destruction when that's available to do as much damage as possible at this point. And uh, with uh, Siegfried and Narmaya's uh, specials here, we should be able to kind of just burst the rest of the health bar down almost, just because of how much damage we're outputting, which is pretty nice to have. So yeah. Like I said, you don't really use the beatdown gauge at all, unfortunately, for optimal damage, which is definitely a little bit unfortunate here. Now, I should have activated my uh, buff here to do more damage, because I don't have my attack buff after you right now. It looks like I do actually do activate it there. So I'm able to get more damage the rest of the fight here. And uh, uh, we're able to get link time up at the very end of this, and the rest of the health bar goes down incredibly quickly. So uh, Bane's definitely not a super hard character to play. When you have link time up, uh, just... Spam energy destruction as much as you can, because the cooldown is going to be even more drastically reduced for that, and you'll get a lot of benefit out of the near t over 2 million damage you do from that basically every single time. So that's probably how you want to approach Vayne during Link time. Just use energy destruction as much as you can. Use your XXYY combo when it's not up, and uh, keep your buff up. So I think that's going to cover it for this guy. Like I said, not too complex of a character, but decently fun gameplay loop. He has some cool things going for him, has a not lot of great defensive utility, I do hope you've learned something from watching this video, and if you did, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I do appreciate all the support that you guys offer me, and any further support is always further appreciated. If you got any feedback, leave it in the comments below on how I can improve these in the future. And as always, uh, thank you guys so much for the support. Have a wonderful and blessed day, and hopefully I'll see you back here soon for future guides.